welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Lisa, also known as La Dolce Lisa. And today's video is so exciting because it has been a long time coming. And a lot of you ask me publicly and of course even message me privately, what are the best restaurants? What kind of food should I eat in Rome? Where do you go to eat in Rome? What restaurant were you eating at if you saw like my story highlights and things like that? So here I am, I'm finally sharing with you guys not just the best restaurants in Rome, but I'm sharing with you what to eat in Rome, where to eat it, and even when to eat it because I'm going to be going over breakfasts, lunch, dinners, snacks, some extras, and everything like that. So if you're going to Rome and you are a foodie, I have you covered. <laughs> if you don't know me, you might be thinking, what makes you the expert on what to eat in Rome? Well, basically, I've lived in Rome on and off for at least, I would say, even over one year of my life. Ever since 2010, I've pretty much went back every single year. I've stayed in there for long periods of time. Lots of stories behind that, but basically, I've been in Rome for a year of my life. And I'm a huge foodie. I pretty much plan my trips around where I'm going to be eating so I know exactly what to eat, where to eat it. And I have kept these places local in the sense that if you are a tourist, a lot of these spots will be around certain tourist spots or destinations. They won't be too far or too hard to get to. So it's a pretty good list. I'm going to be writing a blog post as well. So please check that out in the description down below on ladolcelisa.com. I'm going to be talking your ear off, but it's going to be with good information. So let's get into it. Here is what and where you should eat in Rome, the best restaurants. let's go with breakfast and that is probably one of my most favorite things to eat in Rome is the breakfast. I'm the kind of person that likes to eat breakfast Italian style. So I like a coffee or a cappuccino with something sweet even in Canada. Now when you're in Rome, Italy, that is no exception. Now here is where I think you should definitely go to have an amazing breakfast in Rome but you have to wake up a little bit early or they will sell out of their good breakfast pastries like Cornetti. This cafe is called Roscioli Cafe. They have honestly the best Cornetto in Rome and I've tried them from everywhere and this is literally my favorite. Now a Cornetto con crema is what I personally get. You can of course get them with maybe jam inside or even plain. It is sort of like an Italian croissant but it is different. It's just better, dare I say. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe because it's filled with cream, but it's so good. So you really do have to try Corretti when you're in Rome. But specifically, I found that the best ones are at this Roscioli. They are amazing. Rome is also known for Maritozzi. So if you want to get a Maritozzo, the singular version, you definitely can get one there as well. They also make the best cappuccino. I don't know what it is. I am just obsessed with their cappuccino there. I had such a good breakfast. The cappuccino was so good. My mom even ordered another one after and she normally wouldn't have. So it was really delicious. I highly recommend Roscioli Cafe for breakfast breakfast. This other um, pasticceria, they have amazing maritozzi. It's basically a Roman style breakfast pastry, you can almost call it, but it's like a brioche bread and it's slit in half and on the inside there's panna, which is whipped cream, like just all over it. It's just like exploding with whipped cream. It is so good. If you don't make it to these places that I mentioned to try one, they even have it at the airport so you can even get it there and I promise you it's really good. Now this pasticceria regoli, they have a really delicious pastries and maritozzi especially and all kinds of delicious baked goods. So you guys should really check that out. You really can't go wrong. Next, this is in the Trastevere region and a lot of places I'm going to be mentioning are there because you just eat really well in Trastevere. This is called Lantico Forno Boccione. Now this place has specifically ricotta crostate or a ricotta crostata that is just heavenly. People have even offered these ladies for the recipes and they will not give it out. It is top secret, but it is amazing. I unfortunately didn't get to try the ricotta one with cherries, but I did try the one with chocolate and it was like heavenly, guys. It was so good. The crust is like melt in your mouth. It is not necessarily the most beautiful of pastries when you kind of look at the whole cake in and of itself, but when they slice it open and they weigh it and they sell it to you and it's in your hand and it's warm and it's delicious and it's exploding with ricotta, which is that really mild and delicious Italian cheese that you'll often find in like cannoli. I can't tell you. I even make my own ricotta crostata, but this specific one, it's like unique to them and it is so good and just, oh, it is so good. So if you want to try a really delicious pastry that is just specifically in Rome, 
you have to try that one. Next, I'm just gonna quickly mention tiramisu because I feel like Rome has some really delicious tiramisu spots. You can of course get them at any restaurant after your meal, but if you want one specifically for breakfast, like I often did, there are two places. One is what Rome is famous for, and that is Pompey. It is Il Re di Tiramisu, which means the king of tiramisu, and it really is delicious. They have quite a few locations, and their tiramisu is really good. It comes in a little mini to-go package, ready to eat, so you can take it to go, you could bring it for breakfast. Sometimes I'd, I'd take it to go at night 10, keep it in the fridge in the Airbnb and just have it for breakfast if I knew it was going to wake up late and I'd miss all those good cornetti in the morning. So you can't go wrong. They have a really delicious pistachio or pistachio flavor, which is so good. They have a strawberry flavor, lots of different ones, even the classic one. I would say to try a flavored one just to be different, but that's just me. And now this next place is called Zoom and they also make tiramisu, different flavors similar to pombi, but it's just, they're different. They come as opposed to like little box they come in sort of a cup and they have like the tiramisu piped on top so good one really delicious flavor I believe it was like similar to like a zabayone flavor it was like amaretto and something I'll I'll link it in my blog post so you guys can read further about that but it was so delicious they have some really good flavors and that was honestly my favorite one with the amaretti cookies on top it's like that those almond flavored cookies this tiramisu was unreal so Guys, these things should cover your breakfast, especially if you like desserts like me. <laughs> it's my kind of country, really. Like, where can you go wrong when you can actually have a dessert for breakfast? If all that sweet food is not quite your thing, let's go to lunch. I'm taking you to some spots where you can have some classic Roman food, but as well, these are sort of, they're not your sit down places. I've saved that more for the dinner portion of this video of course you can sit down in some places and eat by all means but they're more of like a grab and go style and the number one thing you need to know about going to rome is the kind of pizza that you'll have there now unlike naples where it has that soft really thin but like fluffy crusted pizza roman style pizza is different this specific pizza is unlike those as well because this is al taglio now rome is known for their al taglio pizza which is basically by the slice and if you're familiar with focaccia that nice soft fluffy italian bread it's sort of like eating a focaccia pizza if i can describe it in that kind of way obviously a little bit different there are two spots that you really should check out number one antico forno roscioli and they honestly make the best pizza al taglio it is so good they have a burrata pizza which is like the pizza of your dreams it has burrata cheese on it on this delicious tomato base oh it's so good they have so many different kinds how you do it is when you're ordering al taglio pizza you basically go to the counter Pick out as much as you want. They'll maybe show you the suggestion that you should get, but if you want less because you want to try more, just say a little bit less, a little bit more. They slice it, they weigh it, they give you your ticket, you go and pay for it, and then you pick up your pizza. Sometimes ordering things in Italy or in another country can be intimidating because you're not sure how it works, but that's usually always how Italia works. I really love Antico Forno Roscioli for that specific reason, the pizza Italia, beautiful. Next, a very classic one. I have another favorite. Pizza Italia. I won't even go there because it's way too far. But the one that comes closest to it is Pizzarium. It's Bonchi's Pizzarium. He makes amazing pizza al taglio. They also make really good suppleese and things like that. I'll get to that in a minute. But the pizza al taglio is so good. Anthony Bourdain even ate there. So it's just like a really treasured spot. They offer so many different flavors. The best part about Pizza Al Taglio is that you can have like a hundred different flavors. You can't go wrong. You can have a little bit of this one, a little bit of that one. They're just delicious. I've eaten here a couple times and I've never left disappointed. Next, I mentioned the suppleese. Suppleese are basically a Roman style arancini. Arancini, those big round rice balls they're known for in Sicily. Well, in Rome, they have a supplee. So they're always really good and a really good spot that I picked them up at. They have them at a couple places that I'm already mentioning, but a really good spot just for those specifically is called the Suplizio. They specialize in all kinds of suppli, and I ate there by chance one time and it was one of the best things. It was just a really quick grab and go kind of thing, not even necessarily for lunch, but just if you're hungry between meals <laughs> and you want to make the most of your time being in Italy. Some of my favorite things to do is just grab things and go 
have little bites here, little bites there. That way I can eat as much as possible. So souplis are great. So in my haste of recording this video, I forgot to mention one of my favorite spots and my favorite things to eat in Rome, and that is a trapezino. This is a plan where it's taken from tramezzino, which is a triangular sandwich bread, and from pizza. So this is sort of a combination of the two. Now basically, they fill this fluffy bread with the topping of your choice. I really love the chicken cacciatore, which is basically chicken cooked in a delicious white wine sauce. They also have them stuffed with burrata, and melanzana which is eggplant and you honestly can't go wrong eating these for lunch so that is this spot in Rome called Trapizzino for a delicious Roman style street food Now I'm going to be talking to you about some dinner spots. I'm going to transition slowly into them. So this one is not so fancy fancy. You can even of course have this for lunch. And I did when I went to Rome a lot because we even grabbed this to go. It was so close to our Airbnb. So we grabbed this pizza and we brought it up and we ate it for lunch or we'd split one. You can sit down there for lunch if you're not planning on having a dinner or you can go here for dinner. It's great. This place is called Pizzeria da Buffetto. And I'm going to recommend this because it is a Roman style pizza. So when you're in Rome, you want to try the pizza that they're known for. Now they are known for thin, crisp pizzas. So they're not thick and chewy like the Neapolitan type pizza. The pizza in Rome has more crunch and it is extremely, extremely paper thin. So it is delicious. And I got a fungi, salsiccia, and cipolla. So mushroom, sausage, and onion pizza. Oh, so good. I can't tell you how good it was. We even brought it back to our Airbnb, like I said. You can't go wrong, so it was so good. I got to see how they're made too. They're so super thin and the people who work there are really nice and accommodating. So I really like this spot as well. That was Pizzeria da Buffetto for a thin Roman style pizza. Now don't get it twisted guys, this is not dry or too crunchy that you feel like you're eating a cracker by any means. It's a juicy pizza, it's just really thin but it is so good. So I'm just gonna go right for it. One of my favorite restaurants in Rome, the number one or my top three by all means. This is called Da Enzo, sometimes known as Da Enzo al Ventinove. This is in Trastevere as well. Lots of good restaurants are in Trastevere, guys. And now they specialize in very Roman style cuisine. So a lot of the Roman dishes, if you feel like you haven't gotten enough of them, they have them there. They even have, of course, meat style dishes, but I'm such a carby, so I'm always eating carbs. <laughs> So I'm loving their pastas. Now you can't go to Rome without having a carbonara or a cacio e pepe or a matriciana, any kind of those pastas, they have them here and they are delicious, they're so good. And one of my favorite things at this restaurant is the burrata. Now they call it burrata, it's usually a specialty item so the waiter will, you might not see it on the menu but he'll tell you that they have the burrata. It's more like a stracciatella type burrata so it's not the whole ball, it's sort of like the creamy part that's inside burrata. Oh, they pair it with these amazing tomatoes. The tomatoes in Italy alone are just, they're worth the trip, they're so good. If you want a tiramisu at a restaurant, they have a delicious tiramisu. They also have this whipped mascarpone with strawberries, with little wild strawberries, fragoline. One of the best desserts. It's just so simple. It's sort of like eating a mascarpone mousse, but with those wild strawberries. If you've never tried a wild strawberry before, they're like little baby strawberries. <gasps> Oh, so good guys. I'm just I'm getting hungry thinking about it. It's honestly my favorite restaurant There are always lineups there I feel like there is a way to call and to book ahead and to reserve a spot But if you go there as soon as they open at about seven o'clock if you're one of the first people in line You'll be eating no problem So do make it a point to check out this restaurant. It's one of my favorites Another restaurant that is so good and if you're a carby like me and you love pasta specifically homemade pasta There is a lady making the pasta in the window. So she's rolling it out. She's cutting it. She's shaking all kinds you can look at her you can talk with her a bit it's such a cool experience and this restaurant is Osteria da Fortunata so it is just a really delicious restaurant for pasta dishes I would just highly recommend getting any kind of pasta that they have there they have their carbonara if I didn't like specify what that is enough it's just the eggs and bacon pasta they have their cacio e pepe, which is the cheese and the pepper. They have a matriciana, which is the one in the red sauce with the pancetta. So they have all those kind of pastas. They make them fresh. They're so good. They're known for their strozza preti there, which literally means strangled breeze. It's just the twisted pasta and it's thick, but like they're so, it's like a nice toothsome pasta. So if you want a nice bite of pasta, that is the one to get. It is so good. I love that restaurant. They also had a really good panna cotta for dessert. If you guys don't know what that is, it's like essentially just like a cooked 
cream, which is so good. So I'll also try their panna cotta if you really like that as well. Okay, if you like truffles and you like truffle pasta, one of the best ways to eat truffles is honestly in pasta. Let's be real. <laughs> This spot has the best truffle pasta that I've had in my life, okay? This pasta dish is so expensive, but it is so good. So if you want to splurge and you want to dedicate one night to your vacation in Rome on having a more high-end dinner, this is the spot. This is called Taverna Trilusa, and it is also in Trastevere. So many teas. <laughs> That's a tongue twister. Truffle pasta in Taverna Trilusa in Trastevere. Truffle in Italian is tartufo. And this pasta is so good. It's literally served to you in a, like a skillet, and it is the most butteriest, truffliest pasta that you can have. It is so good. They also have things like artichokes, which are known as carciofi, and that is very Roman, especially if you have the Jewish style fried artichokes. Carciofi a la Judea, so delicious. So I highly recommend this restaurant as well. They're also known for their ravioli mimosa. Even that foodie Jonathan Chaban ate there and it is like, I mean, that dish is really good too. But honestly, I think that this truffle dish is better because I, who I was with, everyone was getting the mimosa one. I got this truffle one, I splurged and it was so good. I did not regret it. So I highly recommend that restaurant as well. So I really like street food and like I mentioned, I like to grab things and get things to go. Gelato is no exception, but I'm not going to be going into my favorite gelaterias because I have an entire video dedicated to that, which I will link in the description bar down below. So please check that out because gelato is so important in Italy and they have some of the best gelaterias in Rome. I'm just gonna be mentioning some extra things that you can pick up. Of course, you have to get a cappuccino by all means. Even an espresso, they're not known as really espressos in Italy, they're just known as un cafe. If you ask for un cafe, you're gonna get a little espresso. If that's too bitter for you guys, even with the sugar that you might add, by all means, you should try something called ginseng. It is cafe ginseng, and it comes already sweetened, and you have to try it. It is a really good, tiny little sweet, almost like espresso shot, but it has this amazing flavor that it's hard to describe. Similar to French vanilla at Tim Hortons in a weird way. <laughs> but it is so delicious, I absolutely love it. I will also mention if you love coffee, some of the best coffees, this extra is turning into like a coffee thing, but some of the best coffee that I've had has been at Cafe Santustaccio, espressos, or just cafe, like I said. They have a bunch of different flavored ones. They even have a granita al cafe, which is really good, which is just like an icy coffee with whipped cream, so good. The one that I got that I really liked, it was warm, it's called a moretto, and it had, I believe, like cream and chocolate in it, and it was so good. It was sort of like the espresso style, but it was like, oh, it was just delicious. So I really love that moretto one from Cafe Santistaccio. I will also mention that you should definitely try if you want sort of a nice extra experience. Not that the food is like phenomenal there, but for the view alone, you probably might have seen me go here in one of my latest Rome vlogs, but I went there with my mom and sisters and it was such an amazing time and an amazing way to end our trip and that was at Terrazza Boromini. So we kind of decided to go like last minute on a whim and it was so good and we're so glad we went there. It is right in Piazza Navona. Just you go upstairs in this Boromini hotel, I believe, and it is Terrazza Boromini. They have an amazing view, great drinks. If you're interested in drinks, you should get an Aperol Spritz. It is just the aperitivo. Aperol with like the soda water and like Prosecco and it's just so good. So get an Aperol Spritz while you're there, enjoy the view. They have little things that you can get like mozzarella, burrata, little bites, and it's just really good. It's just a great experience in Rome altogether. I highly recommend that. So guys, paired with my gelato video, I feel like you are covered if you're going to Rome and you wanna eat really well, you're good. This list. Is is incredible. I named you a bunch of my favorite spots. I mean, I could go on and name you even more and I even will in my blog post. So please check that out on ladolcelisa.com. But these are a few of my favorite spots and a lot of the things, especially the grab and go things were quite affordable as well. So I hope that I gave you a good idea of what you should eat in Rome and where you should eat it. And if you like more videos like this, please let me know in the comments down below and I would be happy to do more of these for you. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys, and bon appetito. <laughs> A lot of these recommendations. Why? Oh, pasta, which. Oh my god, I can't. Um, what's it called? Why am I drawing a blank? What did I 
did I just say? Oh, <laughs> well, that was a really long period of time to think.